this, this document came out, it's called Principles in the Administration of the Islamic State. It looked at all sorts of different things from recruitment to taxing to foreign fighters and also at media. The last little chapter of it was looking at media and it essentially broke down the uh, propaganda apparatus into three things. So first of all there's the central uh, media offices. So that would be Furqan, uh, which is in charge of the leadership statements and also some of the gory videos back in the day. Then there's also al Etisem Media, which used to do a lot of production for local fighters, so looking at battles in Syria, that kind of thing. Uh, nowadays you have Naba, which is a, a newspaper which is released online and offline uh, every week. This issue 107 was released this morning. So in terms of document uh, collection, uh, one document found uh, by a businessman that I've come to know of from in Membij when it was controlled in East Aleppo, when it was controlled by the Islamic State, he had this uh, uh, little book which was called Principles in the Administration of the Islamic State. And uh, it's not like, uh, you know, some outline, very, very, very detailed uh, genius plan behind the functioning of the Islamic State. But it does give a sense of uh, the, uh, it does give like general suggestions about how this state project should function. And one of the sections specifically, uh, which is this page outlined here, it deals with media, pro uh, the media structure. It suggests for having this central foundation, it should be directly tied to the, uh, to the caliph's office, uh, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi's office and or the uh, Shura Council and it should provide the broad directives by which the media should function. I mean it started out uh, in terms of the state claim incarnation goes back to, you know, to 2006 when we had the announcement of the Islamic State of Iraq and the first media outlet to go with that was uh, something called al Furqan Media which has actually always remained, it still exists today and it's used, for example, to put out speeches by the leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, or the spokesman, who's currently a guy called ha Abu al-Hassan al-Muhajir. Uh, previously, it was a guy called Abu Muhammad al-Adnani. He was much more well-known. He was killed in August of 2016 in a coalition strike. Um, but, but then, as time went on, well, as the, when you, once the Islamic State expanded into Syria, uh, you began to see a more serious and complex development of the media apparatus. So uh, over the course of late 2013 or so, you began to see the rise of these uh, provincial uh, Islamic State news feeds. So based on the so-called provinces, the Islamic State had declared as part of its state. And then, of course, you have things like Bayan Radio, which is literally an FM radio station, or literally has been an FM radio station. It's not clear now whether it's still operating as that. And then you had something called Ajnad Media as well, which uh, was developed to, to devote putting out exclusive songs for the uh, Islamic State or Nasheeds, and uh, as well as uh, recitation of parts of the Quran. Uh, the Ajnad Media, I think it uh, helped in particular to cement uh, the Islamic State's identity and actually helped uh, give the idea you know, it was separate from Al-Qaeda. Uh, so, for example, you know, songs urging, some early songs urging to pledge allegiance to Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the leader of, uh, of the Islamic State. Thus, the war between Iman and Kufr was ignited. You are with us or against us. Bush and Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. They thought they had won. You have Al Hayat Media Center, which does all the foreign language um, media. So, again, some of the gory stuff, some of the more utopian stuff, uh, but a big range of uh, production from the Al Hayat Media Center. Al Hayat Media, which was uh, emerged in 2014, shortly before the caliphate was declared. Uh, in, uh, it was uh, put, de devoted to putting output and reaching out to foreign non-Arabic speaking audiences. Uh, so for example, output in, Arab in English, in French. America's war in Iraq will be over. They lied. By the grace of Allah, the Islamic State expanded into the land of Sham. Uh, and it's since expanded into a range of languages. So they did it, they had uh, media magazines put out in multiple languages, as well as uh, also song production, but in, in multiple, again, in multiple languages. So for example, you had uh, the Darbic magazine is a product of Al Hayat Media. Uh, it's, uh, it's the in well known English magazine of the Islamic State. It's been discontinued since. Um, geschreven materiaal, veel geschreven materiaal. Uh, ze hebben uh, verschillende magazines. 
Um, ze hebben magazines in uh, verschillende talen. Aanvankelijk waren dat verschillende magazines. Had je Dabik bijvoorbeeld in het, uh, in het Engels. Had je Constantinië uh, in het uh, Turks. Had je uh, Istok in het Russisch. Verschillende magazines in verschillende talen. Uh, die zijn op een gegeven moment uh, samengevoegd tot één magazine die dan in verschillende edities wordt uitgegeven. Dat magazine noemen ze Rumia. Dit is het bekende magazine Dabik. Uh, dit is het eerste uh, nummer wat daarvan is geproduceerd. Uh, kort nadat al Abnani de, de, de oprichting van het kalifaat bekend maakte in een uh, audioboodschap. En in, deze, in dit magazine, Engelstalig, wordt uh, voor een internationaal publiek uh, duidelijk gemaakt wat, die, wat, dat, wat het kalifaat precies betekent. En wordt, uh, dit is een beetje het, het glorieuze verhaal van het kalifaat van de islamitische staat. Dat is een heel belangrijk aspect in de ideologie van de islamitische staat. Alles staat in het teken van de apocalyps. Apocalyps komt eraan. Dat zie je ook in de benaming van de Dabik magazine. Dabik staat in Noord-Syrië waar de eindstrijd gestreden zou worden. Um, het nieuwe magazine van de islamitische staat heet Rumia, Rome. Omdat in de hadith ook voorspeld is dat op een bepaald moment de islam zal overheersen over Rome. En uiteindelijk de hele wereld. En dat is heel dat project van, uh, van de islamitische staat, dat, dat daarvan doordrongen is. Uh, dat trekt aan. Uh, het idee dat zij in een tijdelijk leven zitten en dat zij er uiteindelijk aan bijdragen aan het creëren van een duizendjarig rijk als je wilt, dat is iets wat uh, enorme aantrekkingskracht heeft gehad.